Good evening. My name is Claudia Green, and tonight's Ash Wednesday service begins the holy season of Lent and the start of this year's theme of seeking honest questions for deeper faith. Our first reading of the series is from Isaiah 58, verses 1 through 12. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They want God on their side. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. You fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down like, the head, like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the straps of the yoke? to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Holy words for God's people. God. Let's pray. Oh God, be present here and in all the places from which we are worshiping move in us and through us that we too would be moved and changed. Speak to us, we pray. Less of me, more of you, none of me, all of you. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, one of the things that I do uh, at the start of these high holy seasons is to text a few colleagues uh, some words of encouragement uh, to find some connection. Uh, Today, I I found myself texting uh, these words. I said, hey, as we enter into this Lenten season, know that I'm praying for you that you would experience the fullness of God's presence in your life as we journey through the holy seeking and sacred reflection. It's pretty good, huh? And then someone responded back to me and said, thanks for that, and I pray for God's presence in you too, and I pray that we both make the space to experience it. And that sort of shook me. If you're like me, I I imagine your daily and weekly and even monthly schedules are filled to the brink. I imagine that your days are led to appointment after appointment, action and task to action and task. And I wonder, when do we make the time and space to do that holy seeking and that sacred reflection? And perhaps you would indulge me now. I wonder if we can take just a minute to simply be, and I want to invite you, wherever you are, to to find a comfortable position. Uh, One of uh, our online worshipers right now is on a plane, and so it might be a little bit harder for you, but find a comfortable position nonetheless, and to allow the Spirit to meet you. Would you open your heart and your mind to receive in your seeking, and let's just take a minute or so in silent reflection. I want to invite you to find your breath, to take two deep breaths in and out. Maybe for some of you that was too long, maybe for others that wasn't long enough, but I want to invite you throughout this season of Lent to find time to be still and to allow yourself to invite the Spirit in, to have that personal reflection. But I'm also aware that our journeys are not alone. And this journey of life is one that we do together. In, in Korean, we have this word, uri. Say uri with me. One, two, three, uri. It's a noun. As a noun, it means us. Uri, us. Right? But it's also used as an adjective. Uh, you see, in Korean, we, we don't actually uh, use the possessive my to describe anything. Right? I don't say, come to my house. I actually say, come over to our house. Come to Uri house. And I, I don't say, hey, uh, my grandmother called. I, I say, our grandmother called. Uri grandmother. And so forth. There's this communal aspect, this inherent in our language, that we do life 
together. And I think this is where I want to pick up our text from the prophet Isaiah this evening, this, this idea of Uri. Because if when you go to uh, verses 1 and 2, uh, we, we find what we have is a commandment from God to the prophet to declare to the people that they are rebelling against God. And the people, they, they, they respond, hey, wait a second, God, what, what are you talking about? We fast, but, but it's your problem. You don't see it. We humble ourselves, but, but it's your problem. You don't take notice. The, the people thought that they were being right with God and that they were doing the things that they needed to do to connect with God. They were trying to seek out God's heart because they felt that they had lost God or more directly that God had given up on them. And so they fasted, right? They participated in this practice to find connection with God. They refrained themselves. They denied themselves things of the world, usually food, so that they could find intentional connection with God to be more open to hearing and feeling the movement of the Spirit in their lives. They, they fasted because they remembered that they had lost their home, that they had been in exile. They fasted so that they could seek a response or an answer to their continued troubles, and they hear nothing. And so when God calls them rebellious, they're sort of lost because they had been fasting. They, they, they had been trying. They, they thought that they were doing the right thing, but, but God goes on to ask a question that I, I think is so haunting even today. Is this not the fast that I choose? And we get this whole litany of things. Hear them again. To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke, to share bread with the hungry, to bring the homeless poor into your house, to cover when you see one naked. You notice that God takes fasting, which is so often considered a, a personal practice, and transforms the whole nature of it. Fasting, which was once internal, now becomes an outward-facing practice. Fasting is no longer about the self, but now about the other. And God makes it clear then that it is not possible to have a full relationship with God without a just relationship with each other. The rest of the text, it shows us what happens when God's people live into right relationship. And that's the key word, right? Some look at the if-then language that we find in our text as a reward system, right? If you follow God's ways, then your light will shine. If you do this, then you shall take delight in the Lord. Then the Lord will guide you continually. Then the Lord will satisfy your needs. Then, but remember that word, relationship. What I think this text is reminding us is that God does not act alone, God is in relationship with us, is in partnership with us, that, that we get to be part of God's holy transformative work with God and with each other. So as we turn our posture to God's people, to our neighbors and to our siblings, as we follow through and hold true to loving our neighbor, then we too are restored. The, the world is restored. We become part of a restoring and restorative world. But that comes later. Right? Tonight, we start this 40-day journey recognizing our human mortality before God, those times when we turn away, those times when we separate ourselves from God and from our neighbors. And so as we prepare our hearts and our spirits, as we repent and confess and sit in the midst of the brokenness of our world, I ask you, what might God be revealing to you on our journey through the holy seeking and sacred reception?
Will you allow yourself the space to receive what God is inviting you into? Will you allow yourself space to receive what God is revealing to you? I hope and pray that our next 40-day journey in the season of Lent will be one where we do come to terms with all that is happening in the world, but that our posture is open to our neighbors, to our siblings, and to the workings of God in this world. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God, we enter in this journey trusting that you are with us, that you journey through it with us. We thank you for the reminder that as much as we try, unless our hearts are open to you, we are doing the fast that only allows ourselves to feel good about ourselves. So help us to be faithful in the fast that you would choose and that through these days, we would know that you are at work and that we would journey in that work with you. It's in your holy name that we pray, amen.